Hey devs, welcome back for another episode of the Gubar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others do the same. Here we have short chats about things like software development, working in teams, and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of connection, inspiration, and continued learning so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create. Hey devs, welcome back for another episode of the Gubar podcast, where we talk about building great software and helping others do the same. Here we have short chats about things like software development, working in teams, and building your ideal career in tech. We aim to foster a sense of connection, inspiration, and continued learning so we can all continue to dream, learn, and create. In this episode, we're talking about hobbies outside of coding and why I think they're not only important, but may actually be your superpower for building a rewarding career. This podcast is supported by awesome listeners just like you. If you enjoyed the podcast and find this episode useful, please consider subscribing and leaving a review. It helps out the show and lets me know how to best serve you all with future episodes. If you have a question or would like to suggest a future topic idea, I'd love to hear from you. Send an email to podcast at goobar.io for your question or topic to possibly be featured in a future episode. And now let's dive in to today's topic. Can I play video games and still be a software developer? Somebody asked me this question recently, and while it didn't surprise me at all, it did make me a little sad, to be honest. There is definitely a culture in parts of the tech community, and honestly, it it might be a pretty big uh, part of the community, to be honest. Um, But but that culture uh, presents this attitude of all code all the time. You know, it makes it seem like if you don't eat, drink, sleep, code, that you aren't a real programmer. Not only is this not true, like at all, not even a little bit, uh, but this idea is honestly harmful, especially to new developers. And this idea might actually be holding many people back from finding their true genius zone, that that area where all of their skills and interests align and present the the greatest opportunity for a rewarding career, for, for happiness and fulfillment in our work. As software developers, designers, uh, creatives, we are more than just the tools that we use. We are more than our ability to take a simple set of acceptance criteria, drink some coffee, and then spit out some valid output to our QA team or to our users or whatever. You know, we are our experiences. We are our backgrounds, our interests, our hobbies. Bringing these things into our work makes us unique and has the potential to increase the value we bring to a team or project uh, and and bring a value that far exceeds simply our ability to write a for loop or or develop a simple wireframe. You know, there are lots of people out there that build apps. There are fewer people out there that build apps and have a long background in geographic information systems. You know, that was me. That's my background. And that was how I got my first job at a GIS software company. You know, my interest and background in geographic information systems helped me get my first job as much or more than my limited experience with Android that I had at that time. Another previous employer of mine uh, builds creative applications for Android and iOS. Again, many, many developers out there could theoretically build similar apps, but it's that team's creativity and their passion for art and music and design 
that helps set them above the competition. And it's what helps them stay so engaged and so happy with the work they're doing. And that, again, comes through in in the work they do and how they present it and how they uh, talk about the work and how they take care of their employees at the company. You know, do you have a passion for maybe photography? That passion could help you stand apart from the competition when applying to the hot new AI-based photo startup. If you had given up on photography, you may never have had a chance to get your dream job. Do you have an interest in fantasy novels, pixel art, and writing back-end services? Maybe you can find a way to combine those into some kind of web-based RPG that catches the eye of the local game development company, and then they offer you an internship which turns into your a dream job. You know, maybe you have experience as a mental health therapist. Those human centric skills of empathy and communication and investigation might make you a perfect candidate for a product designer or a product manager role where people and understanding needs are at the core of that work. Experience comes in many forms. I think that's the the point I'm trying to make here. It's often all about how you market your own experiences and whether or not you can see how relevant they actually are. And, And we tend to downplay any experience that we don't think is central to the work. So for developers, we tend to downplay any experience of ours that isn't strictly writing code. Um, but but honestly, writing code is such a small part of the overall like software development process that we we really shouldn't discount all those other experiences. We really do ourselves a disservice. The idea here, you know, if there's an underlying theme to this, that I'm just trying to convey is that your greatest happiness, your greatest fulfillment, and success aren't going to come from giving up on your passions or from giving up who you are. The greatest opportunities are in the margins. They are in finding the unique places where your passions fit together and create something much greater than the sum of their parts. So yes, back to the original question. Yes, play that video game, you know, learn the piano, pick up that camera, As long as your hobbies don't consume your life, and I'm sure we all have that one friend that plays too much Fortnite or World of Warcraft and maybe uh, took a dark turn because their hobby did consume their life. So let's just acknowledge that. Let's make sure we avoid that. But as long as we don't let our hobbies consume our life, you will be just fine. And you might actually find that by embracing those hobbies, leaning into them, and bringing those experiences into your work, that you find your ideal career. So with that, I hope that you all can can find those places where your hobbies and your, your work intersect. And I want to thank you all so much for listening to this episode. You know, we're keeping it just a little bit short this week, but this is just something that's been on my mind over the past couple weeks as I've had conversations with several people. I hope this has maybe resonated with you a little bit. And I will just sign off, say that I hope you remember to dream, learn, and create. And I will catch you all in the next episode. Until next time, devs.